but what, what's that whole process and balance kind of like for you? Yeah, you know, I, I think that's really like the million dollar question for a high stakes line poker player, honestly. Like, uh, there's no easy answers. It's just like an outrageously sort of challenging, um, you know, obstacle. Um, you know, when it comes to sleep and things like that, like, my mindset is just always when I hop into a poker session, like I assume I'm going to need to be playing for the next 48 hours. Uh, and anything less than that is just like bonus, you know, um, that's, that's the mindset. Like, it doesn't matter what's happening. It doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter like how poorly I'm playing or feeling or running or whatever. Like, you know, I'm in it until no one like wants to play poker anymore. And, and so you can still see some of these like tendencies that I've had my whole life from like a competitive standpoint, but um, once it does end, like I immediately transition sort of back into a lot of the other things we've talked about, like, okay, what choices can I make that are best for my life? You know, when I get just punched in the face with the deck in a session and it's one in the morning, like, you know, I'll, I'll usually literally ask myself, like when I get in the car, I go, all right, what do you want to do? You want to go to in and out right now and then lie in bed tomorrow feeling sorry for yourself? Or do you want to like make choices that are good for you? Like the healing process begins now. Um, and it's weird. Like, even if like uh, a session as it relates to a fraction of my net worth is is completely inconsequential, the dollar amount like still matters. Like, cause you still like live on earth, you know? So like, if I lose like a quarter million in a session, like I still might, and, and maybe this is a good thing, like very aware of like how much money that is, you know? And, and so it really fucking hurts, you know? Um, and so there's just so much work I do um, particularly the morning of the next day after really long sessions and particularly really tough long sessions. I usually try to not like make decisions that are too self-destructive the rest of that night. And I just give myself the space to say, you're in a lot of pain right now. And that's okay. Like, it's okay to be in a lot of pain, um, sometimes for work reasons or for no reason at all. And then I just like gently ask myself like to try to be ready to have a good day the next day, you know? Um, and and just, I don't know if you're, you're kind of getting the sense, but I'm just like a lot more gentle with myself than I used to be. And I think that's just related to a lot of other things we're talking about, where before I was like, you have to be the best poker player you can possibly be and anything else is unacceptable. And now it's more just like, let's try to play well. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's just a very different sort of gentle mindset where I'm able to just, in all areas of my life, but especially poker, just like pat myself on the back, you know, on a really bad session, I can say to myself, did you do all the things you needed to do for your morning ritual this morning? Did you stay in emotional control during the session? Did you try your best? Did you not quit? Like, even if I just did those things, even if my decision making on that day was just piss poor, I can sort of fall back on that and still pat myself on the back for those wins. I realized it kind of got to a point where I didn't want to be there playing as much mm -hmm. anymore. And um, for some reason around that period of time, losing started to hurt way more. And even even to today, when I lose amounts, and the, the money can be completely inconsequential. It, it, it can be a very small amount of money relative to you know my net worth or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But the, even small hits, when I lose, I feel the pain of them in a way that I didn't feel when I was younger. And when I was younger, it was it was so much more important as a fraction of my of my net worth. I took real hits. It, this was a serious hit, sent me packing down in stakes, and I had to work my way out of it. And now, I, if I if I I feel sometimes even if I lose ten k on a river where I feel I did something, you know, maybe I made a mistake or someone made a bad decision, or and then mm -hmm. I just feel emotionally upset that I lost because I think somewhere around along the way, I think I. I you know, personally just became a little bit too entitled with feeling I should win all the time. You know, I'm good. I should always win. Uh, you don't get to always win. Sometimes you lose. And I know these things in my head, but it doesn't change how my heart feels when I feel that way. You know, you can't really control those things. And I think trying to have a, a, a mindset where you're, you can accept the way that you feel as, you know, being part of who you are and that it's okay for that to be the case, I think is a, is a great way to approach things. So I really like your mindset there. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's, it's cool sort of that, we both, uh, you know, both of us aren't uh, afraid to analyze or overanalyze things in our lives, you know, and so we both sort of, you know, done the calculus on this and come to very different conclusions. I think that that is like intellectually, you know, quite fascinating. Uh, and, you know, I guess just to add one more point to, to what you're talking about, I use that as a tool too. Uh, 
after a really bad session or maybe several bad sessions in a row, like, you know, I'll talk to myself or when I'm being less weird, I'll talk to Jen uh, and just say, I don't have to play. Like, you know, I, I never need to, to play poker again. Like I could be done with this. Like, and just reminding myself that I have that option, that there's no like obligation on any level to ever play again also kind of helps me and I go, oh no, like I want to play, you know, I, I choose to play. Um, and, and again, obviously sort of a different mindset that you had and I'm sure you're going to probably have um, many of your viewers who probably can relate to one or both of those sort of thought processes. Garrett and I played two hands that are a bit different, but very eerily similar. And I was sent this image after these hands. I'm going to bring them up here so that the chat can see. So this is an image where... Uh, oh, no. Why is my Garrett, face so goofy looking? Fuck. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll tell my editor he's, he's getting a pay cut. Um, <laughs> so this is, this is Garrett with 10-7 on 9-8 deuce jack 5. I believe the, the turn action actually got three bets. So there was a lot of money that went on the turn. And uh, he's got his arm over the chair, second nut straight. What can I possibly do here? You can you can see you can see in his face he, he he looks unhappy. Not 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 the total zen moment here for for Garrett. And then here is a hand I played two or three years later on high stakes poker, where I have ten seven, <laughs> arm over the chair, jack nine eight versus queen ten, also facing an all in and looking not too happy about it. And we actually managed to both find folds in these spots. Apparently 10 seven just, just doesn't get it done these days when it hits the second nuts. But when I was shown this, I thought this was just, this was just, it's kind of weird. Honestly, it's, it, it's kind of, it's kind of weird. We're both in the exact same pose with the exact same hand on almost the exact same board. It's uh both up against the nuts. I don't know. I, uh, I, I, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh no, go for it. I'll, oh, I was going to say, yeah, it's, it's just too pure. You know, when you, when you first sent me this like i was like that shit's got to be fake you know so but it, it's funny you bring this up now because i i think it's really to to our point before like i think we're a lot more similar than uh than the public probably would think in terms of you know we both just like want to play well you know and so there's you know you're not going to fold that hand if if negranu is your opponent you know negranu is obviously not going to take the line he did in that hand yeah it's a moot it's a moot point right because yeah if i if i was playing someone that would play balanced i would I, I would probably not fold but even then you probably should fold because there are no hands that can jam there's no hands that can do this so yeah. so you probably just still have to fold really it's just i mean your your hand actually made a bit more sense than my hand my yeah. hand was really what the fuck I mean, yeah. it was, I faced an 8x flop pot jam. For um, sure. Can you maybe talk a little bit about what, what you thought in your hand? I'm not sure if you fully full remember how it went down. And everything. Yeah, yeah. I think it, uh, I think it just went um, like flop, check, call, turn, check, raise, three bet, call, I'm out of position. Uh, and then I checked the river and, uh, you know, Andy potted the river or, or close to it. Uh, and it's just sort of like a, a, like a perfect example of like, kind of how I play poker, which is like, like I live by the, the sword, I die by the sword, you know, like I'm, I'm well aware sort of what a comically exploitable fold this is in this moment. I'm well aware, like Andy's a very capable opponent who, by the way, like I will be playing hundreds of hours with on stream in the future. And he very much can punish me for making a fold, even like in the, the realm of, of, of sort of, you know, one like this. Um, but I kind of just like go with my gut you know, in, in certain spots. And it's, it, it's, it's so hard to explain, right. To assign a relative weight to my decision-making process. Like sometimes like in this spot, like, you know, everything says call minus like one thing, which I just assigned a lot of weight to and many other hands I play, including against Andy specifically, like I have no gut feeling. I have no nothing. Like I'm just going off of like theory in terms of like what choice I want to make. But that flexibility um, is is something I always sort of really appreciate having, however complicated it makes, um, you know, each decision point for me. Um, and then I think the other sort of aspect of this is like, I don't really like give a fuck what people think, which is like a really powerful weapon when you play on streams all the time. Uh, I make all sorts of egregious plays, many of them are, are, are very bad theoretically uh, and like the wrong answer in the moment. Um, and I have sort of the self-confidence in my poker game, which 
you know, takes years, decades to, to acquire, but I'm very fortunate to have it to just be like, well, I'm just going to do this. And, uh, you know, this is might be super fucking wrong, like whatever. Uh, and that's where kind of, you know, I guess how I would describe like white magic sort of plays a role for me. I, I just don't, I just don't really care. And, and I think it's one thing to like fold a river, but I think it best applies like when you just go all in for many, many big blinds. Uh, I think that that one is uh, particularly scary, particularly hard for the human mind to wrap their head around. Uh, you know, irrelevant of what one's win, win rate is, like if you just bluff off like a thousand bigs uh, in a hand, which like I've done a couple times, like in the last couple of weeks, that shit fucking hurts. And you I, have to be pain, like you have to be strong enough to like deal with the pain of that, like, you know, after the the session ends. And, you know, I want to bring you back into this because... I just loved watching you play poker versus Negranu. I just fucking loved it. And like, even though our backgrounds are so different, like we are just the exact same where we just go, you know, and maybe for different reasons, right? But we both go, all right, well, it's time to fucking ship 500 bigs in here with nothing. Let's fucking go, you know? And that's like, not, I don't know. I, I would watch you play and I would feel like, this is probably the way you thought about it because it's the way I think about it, where I just go, this is what separates me. Like my ability to do this and give no fucks and like, we'll just see what happens. And like, I would like to think that very few, even really great players um, would just put all of the money in there, like at the frequency you did with nothing in that challenge. And I, you know, I just adored it. I guess like both as a player, well, thank you. I appreciate a, a that. fan of the game. You know? What's the scummiest shit you've ever seen that you're able to share with us here today? Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think I could talk about like any of like the okay, that's cool. the scummiest shit. All right, I can give you this one because this one's personal, right? And I can't give you like the names of the people. Like I don't know. Like the last, I'll, I'll give you like the spoiler. Like you know, they told me like if I ever like outed any of them publicly, they were definitely just gonna kill me. So it seems like a bit of like a negative free roll, but. I remember a long time ago uh, where like I lose like 150 K in this game where like at that point, like 150 meant like a lot more to me. Um, and, uh, and uh, it's in a, uh, it's in a home game. Right. Um, and it's just like nuts versus second nuts, like whatever. But like after the hand went down, I just like thought it through and was just like kind of studying their body language and like thinking it all out. Uh, and just like, it just came to me. I go, these guys fucking cheated. Like they, they set the deck, like whatever, you know? Um, and so thankfully at that time I had somewhat of uh, a voice like in the internet, you know? Um, and so like I told him, I was like, listen, like I'm outing all this shit publicly, like if we don't have a meeting. So I meet with him and like his main business partner and I basically like tell them their scam. I go, here's what's happening. Like you have this guy and this guy you and the dealer, like you guys all work together. These are like the fake fish, like donating money. The whole game is like a traveling scam that you guys are running. You know, I'm like, I'm like, you either pay me my money back or like, I'm going public with all this shit. And they were making so much money cheating people that like, they decided it was like a worthwhile investment to pay me back like the 150,000, like I had lost in that game. But it was pretty intense and like pretty scary and like all sorts of death threats from like a couple guys who were very clearly like out of their mind, you know? Um, and that was like one of the first forays I got into like sort of understanding like just how deep the scumminess can go. And also like the value of like a dollar to a lot of people, you know, like I kind of never forget like when I loan people money, this or that, which, you know, I've been burned so many times. I try to always avoid, like, in, in any situation, like, you know, people kill each other every day over 10 grand. And you said, I always lean towards trying to be too aggressive. And honestly, if I had to tell uh, someone new to poker that's just trying to trying to win and, and just some base gen, gen, general advice, I would say lean towards being uncomfortably aggressive because a good poker, you're going to make plays that are aggressive and uncomfortable and you could get stacked and the human um, the, the innate human emotion is conserve protect don't put myself on the line 
But you're actually supposed to put yourself on the line quite a bit when you play good poker and no limit hold them. And you, you should just be willing to put your foot in the gas if you think you, you should. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I want to uh, like tie a couple things you've said together when you first started talking about sort of how solvers change the game as well as like what you were just talking about. Uh, I think that that's something that's often missed amongst like all but elite players in terms of the way I play. Like uh, people think like I play like a like a nut job. Like, nah. I don't have shit on the solvers, you know, like they go so much harder than like even I do, uh, certainly like in a variety of spots. Um, and so, so I, I kind of want to give a few thoughts on, on solvers, but certainly in the beginning, like I felt the way you did where there was all this like cool shit, like I came up with, like how to do over the course of my poker career, you know, before solvers. And it just sucks because I feel like, you know, like less, studied like people maybe less capable of original thought like whatever like if they just worked hard they like they like learned how to do that shit you know just like all sorts of like kind of like unorthodox lines that like absolutely have to be part of your arsenal if you're trying to like optimize your play and like they were just they just never even considered like oh shit like i should take this line you know sometimes do you have any hands that you can recall that you've played on stream where people really owned you? Because I feel every Garrett hand I see, it's you're just just destroying someone's life, and and then and then where are the hands? Where are the, there's got to be some of the other hands, right? Yeah, so there is. I would say um, there's a lot of them, um, but yeah, a lot of them like a lot of my like getting owned hands like come from like people taking a line uh, I didn't think they were likely to take. Um, and then, uh, and then me just like putting the chips in and them calling me down. Like there was one hand against Andy. I remember we had like a four bet pot where he had aces and I think I had ace queen of clubs and like he checked the flop in a spot where I, I really didn't expect him to. And so I just put the rest of the money in on the turn and river, uh, and, and he called me. So that happens quite a lot, but there was a period kind of early on when I was playing on live at the bike. Uh, where like people just ran like sick bluffs against me like several weeks in a row as part of like, I think it was like a half million or million dollar downswing I went on. Uh, one of them, you know, was that one hand with Art where he had ace king versus my kings. And then I remember I played a hand like later on like versus Gary where I ended up folding a set in a spot where uh, like, and the river, like, completed the flush where I didn't think, like, he had any offsuit, like, ace-x hand, so, like, he didn't even have the blocker, uh, because, like, the, the turn, I think, even went multi-way, uh, and just got super owned there, um, and so, so there's been several, but I bring this up, uh, mostly to just, like, I remember being in that moment, like, especially after the Gary one, where it just felt like everything went wrong for me for, like, months straight and then to just be bluffed again you're just like it doesn't matter who you are you know we already talked about how i have a lot of belief sort of in my decision making at the table i remember i like went home that day and i'm just like i think this is it man like i don't think you got it anymore like how many fucking times are you gonna get bitch slapped by like good players in a row you know uh,